This is the Glen Academy Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo. Brought to you by Advanced Rehab, Urgent Med One, Boys Transmissions, Golf Cart Wholesale, Alan David Tucker, and by Marchside Grill. And now here's your host, Glen Academy Insider, Drayton Hogarth. Welcome to the Glen Academy Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Drayton Hogarth on location at Marshside Grill where we'll be each and every week on Sunday nights at 6.30 for the entire season. This segment of the Rocky Hidalgo Show is sponsored by Marshside Grill, Advanced Rehab, Urgent Med One, Boyd's Transmissions, Golf Cart Wholesale, and by Alan David Tucker. And now, joining us, the head coach of the Glen Academy Red Terrors, Rocky Hidalgo. Thanks, Greg, and I appreciate it. No problem, no problem. Well, first off, congratulations, Coach. Just a, a great atmosphere. Set Friday night. The student section was rocking. The entire crowd was, was live with a lot of these folks that are here joining us tonight. And you guys claimed the city championship 28 to nothing over Crosstown Rival Brunswick High. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's always it's it's neat to go out and see as many people there for both teams. I mean, right. and, and you know, as divisive as the game can be sometimes, but it is good to see that the community comes out and supports uh, both programs on a night like that. Right. Well, start us off. Tell us tell us your thoughts about the game. Just your general thoughts. Well, obviously, I think defensively played really well. Um, you know, I've, I've said repeatedly, I think I, we have a chance to to, to be uh, special on defense. Our kids really run to the ball well. Um, uh, we're physical. We're good tacklers. Um, and, and, you know, that's what you that's what you need defensively. Offensively, it felt like we controlled the offensive line of scrimmage or the line of scrimmage. And, and uh, we were very uh, – We I think we only ran like 31 plays and we scored, you know, three touchdowns. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of plays in the game, period. Uh, but offensively, we did we did a lot of good things. We uh, we, we ran the ball well, and, and obviously, uh, uh, they were trying to do some things to take the ball away from our perimeter players. And, and right. our offensive line got a hat on a hat, just what we said we needed to do. And we were able to run the, run the ball at the end and finish out that game. Right. Now, you mentioned you you know the limited plays, but those first two drives were were very good, very well put together. Uh, what was kind of the initial game plan to to start out? Well, you know, um, Coach uh, Chase Harp, our new, our offense coordinator, he he's um, I've I've uh, really got to know him well, obviously working with him. But I, I think one of the things our our fans will see from him is he likes to to dial up those big plays in the right situations, and he's not afraid to call plays on fourth and one versus Wayne County. We we threw the ball on fourth and one and scored a big touchdown. And but he likes he he does a he's got great anticipation of what the defense is trying to do. He's a he's a calls a really really good game. One of the things I think that uh, he's able to do is kind of spread the spread the ball around a little bit and uh, keep the defense kind of setting the defense up. I think is what he's been real effective at this far. Mm -hmm. Now, start out with the with the player of the game, uh, Garrison Hurd. He was just seemed like a little freight train all night long. Uh, yeah, definitely give him some props. Uh, had some great inside runs, but also was able to display his speed that he has on that pass play. Um, talk a little bit about Garrison's performance. Yeah, you know, uh, I've said repeatedly, Garrison is deceptively fast. He's he's a very strong kid, very physical runner, and people don't realize that, you know, he's he's a 4 or 5 kid in the 40-yard dash. He can really run. He's got breakaway speed. Um, he can do so many things. He's uh, I think people underestimate how athletic he is. Uh, he, he, he does a great job of finding seams in the defense and with our offense he's an exceptional zone runner he just kind of gets in there he's very patient uh there were a couple times friday night it didn't look like there was anything there and he hugged the combo block and then slid off and and then next thing you know he went out and he's, he's got you know seven eight yards right uh what was the play that he that he took to the house on the on the pass play uh that was um i'm trying to think exactly what the call was on uh on that one um i can't remember exactly on on that one if it was a key if it was a key pass or if it was on uh on the peel on the wheel okay. wheel route um but uh but you know he's just he's just so dangerous in uh when he's out in in the passing game or whether you get handing the ball off to him and you know we do the stuff with the uh with the wildcats some a lot of things we haven't done is he's he has the ability to throw the ball and you will see us throw the ball out of the wildcat as we move forward right this is the Glen Academy Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. 
Uh, Coach, you mentioned your offensive line. They, they appeared to play great all game long, uh, great run blocking, and did very solid in the passing game as well. Um, who had some stellar performances along your offensive line Friday? Well, you know, I think uh, uh, Frank Farrell had some a couple of really nice plays. One was a, one of those touchdown runs. He really just locked up on their defensive end and, and uh, put him in the back of the end zone. It's good to see stuff like that. I think really up front, all of our kids did very well. I think you see Zelante Hillary really start to develop. Marcus Maxwell um, is, is, you know, is coming back after starting for us for 13 games. Uh, is really starting to develop a, uh, a, as a player. Tommy Craig, who moved from guard to center, yeah, gets a little better each week. With his, uh, he's more consistent with his snaps. And really, it, this is really all about kind of the chemistry. It's it's all those guys. It's a sweet melody. Those offensive linemen have to play together, and yes. we get a little better, and we all kind of get on the same page every week. Yeah, that's kind of the unique thing about an offensive line in all of sports. Your five individual pieces have an operate as, as one unit. How, as a coach, how do you? try to develop that cohesiveness as a for along an offensive line well you know uh, there's no there's nothing you can do other than than just reps at practice tons of reps and reps and reps you have to give them a variety of different looks and you have to coach them on film and coach them on the field i mean it's our kids get a ton of coaching between coach harp who's an old offensive line guy coach hall and coach Barry and myself we spend a lot of time and I, i think great football programs are great on the lines of scrimmage and and when i took the job here i said we were going to build from the offensive line up and I think we really tried to do that. Mm-hmm. Now also, uh, Justin Larson was was very steady uh, in the backfield as a quarterback. The only play I can think of was was maybe the grounding penalty, but that was kind of a you know the high snap kind of talk about his progression and everything so far as a, as a quarterback. Well, I think you I think you see him. He was very efficient with the ball. Um, you know, there are a couple times he probably held it a little longer than we wanted to, but that's that's gonna that's gonna be something that he's gonna continue to improve on. Just hasn't played a whole lot of football. He gets a little better each week. He's uh, he's learning how to distribute the ball back there. The play where we got the grounding penalty, that's one of the things I know he was just trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, but you know, in the future, we'll you know he'll he'll learn from those things and and continue to get better. I think uh, one of the things he does is just kind of steadies the kids out there a little bit, and and, and he's been good for us this year, and I, I I expect him to get better and better every week. Oh yeah. Uh, now, while your offense. Did very well and uh, was, was very efficient. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your, your Red Terror defense. Uh, they made play after play to keep the Pirates out of the game. The you know, Pirates drove to get some chances in. Uh, who were your defensive standouts uh, from, from Friday? I'm not sure we could just pick one. I mean, I, I think uh, Walter Thomas had an incredible game. And, and I, I mean, gosh, he was just everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think uh, one of the things I think we can see is is the growth of our defensive staff. I think Josh Veal is re- really set- settling in uh, as a defensive coordinator with our 3-4 defense. I brought the 3-4 here. It's something that we ran for the last nine years at Walton High School. He's really starting to learn and, and the intricacies of that and, and, and calling it during the game. Um, our secondary guys have worked very well together. We brought over Taylor Sharp, who came over from Brunswick High. He's been a great hire. I mean, he's brought uh, just kind of just, just really some – uh, just hard nosed edge back there to our secondary guys, very detail oriented. He's done a great job, and you know I think Coach Floyd, Coach Imperial, and, and Coach Yates has done a great job coaching our kids. And you see it out there; kids play at high level. They've got a lot of energy. The the one thing I'm happiest about is how physical we are. We will yeah. knock the snot yeah. out of you over there, and our kids run to the ball and they're good tacklers. And and you know I like our pieces up front. I've, I've said over and over again we have a chance to be an exceptional defensive unit. And I think we'll continue to get better, and, and uh, hopefully we'll stay healthy. Sounds good. More to come on the Rocky Hidalgo Coaches Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Right now, these words from our sponsors. Marshside Grill is your home for the best burgers, spuds, and seafood around. Come enjoy the view out by the water while taking in an ice-cold beverage. Marshside Grill is your home for the Glen Academy Red Terror Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo and a proud sponsor of Glen Academy and local high school athletics. So stop in any day or night of the week for the best view and atmosphere here in the Golden Isles. And also, check us out on Facebook. Go Terrors! That back won't stop aching or that knee won't stop throbbing? Your answer is Advanced Rehabilitation and their staff of professionals. Locations in Brunswick and on St. Simons for your convenience. 
go to the place that is trusted by student athletes all over the Golden Isles as well as professional athletes. Advanced Rehabilitation specializes in neuro and orthopedics and will have you back in the game in no time. Find a clinic near you, physicaltherapygeorgia.com. Tired of waiting hours to get in and out of the ER or can't get in to see your doctor? The wait is over. Urgent Med One is a fully functioning urgent care clinic with highly trained professionals, on-site x-ray and labs that will get you in, out, and on with life. Open weekdays 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekends 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or sign in online with Zip Pass. Located off exit 36B on Highway 341, look for that mass Jeep with the big red cross out front, E-R-G-E-N-T, Med 1. Drive a few minutes and save a few hours. Welcome back to the Glen Academy Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Drake Hogarth on location for Marside Grill. This segment is brought to you by Marseille Grill, Urgent Med 1, and Advanced Rehab. Coach Adalgo, uh, you, you've mentioned your linebackers several times on, on earlier shows, and uh, they seem to be all over the field Friday. Can you talk about their play and kind of who, who, uh, who kind of stood out to you from Friday at the linebacker spot? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, one guy I've talked about repeatedly is uh, Xavier McClinton, who is who's just been dynamic at linebacker since he's come here, uh, since he started for us. I mean, he is everywhere. He's got great foot speed. He's real physical. He runs through tackles. Obviously, Hunter Hall, uh, who started for us last year, he's he's a guy who's got a lot of experience back there. Fits on the ball well. The guy that we got back this week that made a huge difference was Preston Joseph. And Preston is he's not real big. He's about five nine, 170 pounds. But he'll knock the taste out of your mouth, and he's just—he's a busy bee out there. Runs all around. Uh, he did a lot of good things, and and then uh, Cameron Tresner, Chris McCormick played really well for us. Those guys are getting better. Both of them are transitioned to outside linebacker spot. Uh, and you know, it's good to—it's it, a—it's a really good group of guys. They're very athletic. That's one thing that I like about them, um, and they can cover some ground out there. Mm -hmm. Now, turnovers obviously played a huge role in the game. You had the fumble at the one-yard line that you guys. Like you said, knocked the taste out of the quarterback's mouth and, and knocked it loose, recovered it. Uh, then you had the huge 77-yard interception by DJ Dallas. And then you can even, I can even count the, the block field goal as a turnover as well. Uh, was that basically the, the biggest key to the game Friday? Well, you know, a big part of it. You know, when you, when you play defense, defense against a team that, you know, gets you in a lot of empty sets and they've got a quarterback who can – who can run the ball the way uh, the Jernigan kid can, and you've got Sean Smith on the outside. They've got athletes out there, big offensive line. You know, it's uh, you're not going to three and out teams like that. You've got to pick your chances. And the one thing that we coach our kids is that we've got to stay in it and run to the football and be physical. And, and you know, I would say that some turnovers happen and some turnovers are forced. I think our kids forced turnovers Friday night. Yeah, they ran to the football, and when they got there. They struck the ball carrier. Yeah. And that's how you force turnovers. And we preach that to our kids. Get to the ball, be violent. Get to the ball, be violent. I think you saw that Friday night um, with, with, with our defense. We play, uh, we're playing great team defense right yeah. now. And, and that's one of the things when you do that, when you're aggressive and fast, you'll, first, you'll, you'll force those turnovers. Right. Now, was the plan to play DJ on defense game planning for the week, or was that kind of an in-game adjustment that you guys saw? No, we, we knew we'd uh, we knew we were going to get some empty formations, and we wanted to make sure we didn't want to pick up something easy uh, with uh, Sean Smith. He's a, he's yeah. a very good player. You know, I'll be honest with you, um, I probably underestimated how good he was Friday night. He really showed me he's very strong. He ran hard. I was really impressed with him. He's he's people around here. Now, people people in the community should be very excited about the guys they're going to get to watch over the next two years. Obviously, DJ Dallas is going to be one of the best players in the country. I think you're looking at those two kids over there at at uh, at, at Brunswick High will be as well, and, and they were very impressive. Uh, that big tackle they have, he blocks out the sun. But we expected to play DJ. Our plan was to play him all along uh, because we wanted to negate Sean, and uh, and that that was it. And, and I, you know, I've coached uh, some very good secondary guys, quite a few guys who played in the SEC. DJ's is good or better than all of them, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and if you want to throw the ball over there near him, you, that's your business. We see how it worked Friday night when we did it. I hope more people try to throw it his way <laughs> because when he's, you know, as it gets cooler, he'll play more defense. It's tough right now on yeah. a kid to play 80, 90 snaps a game, um, but uh, I, I hope more people try and throw it up over there near him. Right. You're listening to the Rocky Hidalgo Coaches Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. 
Uh, when you, you mentioned DJ, you've coached kids before. How do you kind of – where do you see his future at? at receiver or, or defensive back at the next level? Well, I think every, everybody's a little different. He's so athletic and so dynamic with the football in his hands. He, he catches it. He runs so well after he catches The other thing is he's a very strong kid. Um, so I can see people saying we would like to have him. He's got, he's got long arms. He's got a very good catch radius, what they say, as a slot receiver because he can go up and get a lot of footballs. And once he catches them, he, he can make a lot of people miss. Um, the other side, defensively, he's got those long arms. He's physical. He's physical enough to play safety. And he's got great hips, and he's got those long arms to play corner. Um, so I think either one of those things can be something that uh, – that, that he can do. And I think, at, you know, Georgia, I think they're looking at him in the secondary. But I know a lot of guys who feel like he has a chance to play on the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Coach, this thing, this week, things don't get very any easier for Lane Academy as Camden County Wildcats will be heading up from, from uh, Camden County. What are you expecting from Coach Walton Coffee's Wildcats this year? Well, you know, the one thing with Camden is you know what you're going to get. Um, they're they're going to line up with the wing tee and try to cram it down your throat. They're really good at it. They do – that you know, since for the for the last 20 years, every kid born there uh, got a three-point stance and blocked down on the defensive end uh, in the wing tee. So they they do an excellent job running that offense. Their kids, I mean, every kid they come up through middle school, knowing how to execute it. Uh, so it's it's tough because it's very different from what we've seen the last few weeks. They've got a big, strong, physical offensive line. Their their backs are very very good. Big big hard runners uh, that break a lot of tackles. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is, you know, they're they're what we're trying to be. Right. Uh, they they don't they don't commit a lot of mistakes, and because of that, they don't beat themselves. We talk to our kids all the time. Mismatches don't beat you. Mistakes do. Mismatches don't beat you. Mistakes do. Uh, they don't make any mistakes. They're they're solid in all their special teams. They're going to catch the ball. They're going to hold on to the ball. They're going to make sure they've got good protection on all their kicks. So that's that's the thing that you have to do. You're not going to get anything easy on them, so you're going to have to earn everything. I think when we went down there last year, we made a ton of errors that that, that put the game out of reach for us and really a game that we competed very well and drove the ball up and down the field and played some hard-nosed solid defense, but we gave them too many opportunities on a short field and, and end up uh, being a lopsided score. So it'll be interesting to see where our program has gone, I think, um, and how far our kids have gone. I think uh, to play in a game like this and compete against a team like Camden County, this is this is going to be a playoff quality game against a playoff quality opponent. We'll kind of see where our program is. All right. Now you mentioned penalties. I know you had to be proud. I don't recall very many penalties called against you guys this past week. Yes, I think the uh, the crew from Statesboro did a great job. I mean, I, it was one of the most well officiated games I've been a part of. Uh, I have to say, I think they're they're they, those guys were very professional at everything they did. They uh, they communicated well with our coaching staff, and, and I'm sure with the O side, and, and they they did they let the kids play. They went out there. They didn't just kind of interject themselves in the game. And the game it was a great football game because of that. So yeah. I I commend those guys and. And uh, anytime they want to come back and, and officiate a game, I'd be more than happy to see them because I think they were they were top notch. Uh, I think the other side is our kids. Like I said last week, we've got some young kids who haven't played a lot. We're going to continue to to improve and get better. And and um, you know we, we're learning. We can't go downfield and pass plays. We've got some things like that that some kids that honestly you take for granted as a coach. You go out and you coach a kid, and and they may not know that. Right. And. Um, and that, that was the case at Wayne County. We actually got called for it one time. Uh, so we cut it, cut our number of uh, illegal receiver downfield in half. So that was good. Right, right. Well, we'll be right back to the Glen Academy Coaches Show with head coach Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. <laughs> Need an attorney who specializes in personal injury and criminal law? Alan David Tucker. He fights for the rights of the injured and accused. Located next to the waterfront at 9 St. Andrews Court, since 1982, Alan David Tucker has been practicing law in the Golden Isles and helped thousands of people just like you solve their legal problems. Give Alan David Tucker a call. Proud supporter of Glen Academy Athletics, 912-267-7123, and let's go Terrors. Looking to make your life more fun? Then check out GCW Carts. With top-of-the-line carts like Easy Go, Bad Boy, and Cushman, you can cruise the island or just around the neighborhood in style. 
Need to rent a cart? GCW Rental rents carts for long or short term use and they make it easy by delivering your cart to you and picking it up when you're finished. So remember, for brands like Easy Go, Bad Boy, and Cushman, visit GCW Carts in Brunswick at the corner of Cypress Mill Road and the Spur, or call 912-434-4601. You've walked your last mile. Boyd's Transmissions will get you riding with a smile. Boyd's Transmissions is your hometown stop for any and all transmission work and much more. Boyd's Transmission has been locally owned and operated for over 30 years right here in Glen County. Come check us out at 3123 Norwich, right across from the National Guard Armory, 912-264-6768, or find us on Facebook and Go Terrors. It's hot and keeping your pool running is essential right now. ASP is your hometown pool care and maintenance neighbors. Marcus and the professionals at ASP will have your pool looking and running like a dream to help you beat the heat. 912-230-5777 or online at www.stsimonsgapoolservice.com or find ASP on Facebook. ASP is a proud supporter of Glen Academy Athletics. Let's go Terrors! Welcome back to the Glen Academy Red Terror Coaches Show with the Red head coach Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. This is Drayton Hogarth on location at Marshside Grill. This segment is brought to you by Golf Cart Wholesale. Boyd's Transmissions, and Alan David Tucker. Coach, after a down season last year with Camden, uh, you certainly expect them to come back strong, and they have so far with a 2-0 start. Uh, will they be your, your toughest test so far this season? Uh, you know, they're, they're really good. I, you know, I thought Wayne County was really good. <laughs> I don't want to see – I'm not sure I want to see Wayne County again with that defensive front either. Uh, but uh, Camden is a very good football team. Coach Coffey does a great job. They're, their kids are very well coached. Um, and, you know, I know last year was a, they were a little down, didn't make the playoffs. But, you know, programs like that don't stay down long. Um, I, I've seen them on tape, and I know from talking to people who've gone against them, like at team camps and defensive camps during the summer, they felt they were much improved. I think, I think physically they, they're a very physical football team. They're really running the ball real well. And so um, I think they'll have a better season this year. All right. Now you mentioned their, their wing tee offense. What's the toughest aspect of facing that? Is it, is it a mental – Mental th deal or, or a physical deal? It's a little bit of both because their kids are uh, they're gonna they're gonna block down and, and kick out those guys on the edge. They're very physical. It's a physical offense. Their kids want to get downhill uh, as runners. That you know those guys get the ball. They're one two three. They stick their foot in the ground. They run north and south, and they try to run over whatever's over there. Uh, the other side of it is you know you've, you have all those motions and, and pulling guards and. Right. And, and so sometimes, uh, you know, if your kids aren't disciplined, it can be kind of like ships pass in the night and they can lose track of the ball. I think that happened a couple times to us last year. We, we uh, screwed up some uh, adjustments to motion, some over formation. They do a lot of things where they do four-man surfaces, do some nasty splits by split ends, and they give you a lot to work on. A lot of people think it's boring offense defensively. It, it puts you in a bind. There's a, lot of, there's a reason why people have won a lot of football games with it. Right. How, what's the similarity to that offense and, like, the triple option? Well, you know, um, I expect they'll run probably some – they they haven't had a need for it yet, but their quarterback is a very good runner. I think we'll see some down options, some belly option out of them. We saw some last year. Uh, when you press them and get them in, in tight situations, I, I think they, they like to do that um, depending on how you play their plays. Uh, it's just very different. The triple is uh, – they're, they're two different animals. Um, that both of them require you to be disciplined, uh, and you, you obviously you need to be very well coached to compete against both of them. But they're they're, they're different animals. They require two different things, and they they test different things on a defense. They're they're trying to they both have different stress points. They're trying to do one thing about both offenses though. They both have answers depending on how you you play them defensively. They have an answer for it, mm -hmm. and that's what makes them difficult. There there are things that are built into the offense. If you do this, we do this. And, right. and I think when you go and when you watch University of Auburn, everybody talks about his spread offense. You know, he's basically running the wing tee out of the shotgun. And, you know, he's running buck sweep, jet sweep, Sally, and the same thing that Camden County's running. Uh, everybody to, loves to see that offense. And it's a spread offense. If you lined up under center, ran the wing tee, they'd run him out of town. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it's it's a very good offense. It's tough to defend. Yeah, it is. Um... <clears throat> Now, I've told I've talked to people about Camden and, and one of their biggest advantages is just the sheer size of the school that they're able to just bring kid after kid off the bench and stay fresh. Is that is that 
accurate in your opinion that, that they're just so deep and they kind of out basically wear, wear another team down? I, I think in the past it's probably been the case. Um, you know, I, I look forward to our kids. We, you know, we've gone from about, you know, 90 kids in the program to almost 140 in a year. Um, a lot of those are young kids. So I, I, I think if we do, if I do my job here and continue to build the program, that won't be an issue. We have plenty of football players in Glenn County that will want to play for the Red Terrors that will be able to go out and compete for 48 minutes against them. Um, so I, and I think I, I think we have pretty solid depth this year so long as we don't have injuries. Um, but, you know, they, they've got a lot of kids playing football down there. They're very well coached up through the middle school. And so when they lose a guy, usually their, their number two is better than your number two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the Glenn Academy Coaches Show with Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coach, um, what are you going to stress to your kids in the, for game game plan this week? Are you going to, like you said, just work on the misdirection, or what, what's the preparation uh, proce uh, process this week? Well, you know, again, I'll go back and say this: it's really about us. We've got to, you know, it, it was a big win for us, very emotional. We've got to understand. We have to survive success. It's something I've said over over and over again. We have to survive success. We have to learn how when we have something good happens to us to come back to work and manage our emotions and, and focus on Monday, focus on Tuesday, focus on Wednesday, and get ready to win the game on Friday. And that's that's really what we have to do. If we'll do that, we'll be fine. Right. You going to maybe bring them back down to earth a little bit early in the week after the big win? No, you know, they need to be mature enough to, to learn that stuff. And, you know, a good time to get on them is after a win. I'm first, But I don't have really anything to get on them about. I'm not a big proponent of, of you know, mutual suffering or – or uh, anything like that. I want, I want our kids to go to practice and have fun. And if they're having a good experience at practice, then then they're going to work hard. I want them to enjoy what we're doing and to be coached hard. That doesn't look. Anybody's been out there, you know, I, we get on our kids and we coach the heck out of them. Right. Um, but you know, uh, I'm just not. I'm not going to bring them down to earth just to bring them down to earth's sake. I'm going to. I'm going to talk to them Monday about being mature and handling success. And this is the next task at hand. Let's get ready and practice on Monday. Let's focus on Monday and go to work. All right. Uh, now, as far as the preparation process, do you, do you go back and look at last year's game against that you have for film-wise, or do you just kind of look at film from this year, or what was kind of the process with that from a coach's perspective? Yeah, a little bit of both. We'll, we'll review last year's tape. We watched last year's tape. We watched all of this year's tape. Every ta everything we can get on them that we watch. We probably have seven or eight of their games last year. We want to see how they, they – a lot goes into this, probably a lot more than moms and dads understand. You know, when people are up there screaming, oh, run the ball, throw the ball, do all this stuff. You know, our coaches have spent all summer long deciding on uh, looking at how teams line up to certain situations and, uh, and certain formations. So we, we have a good idea what we're going to get. Um, and so our goal is to go out there and, and be, be prepared for that, and, you know, when we align in a certain formation or defensively, you know, knowing the formations that are going to give us. But sometimes people show up and they surprise you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they give you something that's not on tape. But we've looked at everything from last year, uh, all of their games this year. There's no tell. I think defensively we had, uh, uh, and we had like 570 plays that we were reviewing just on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, Coach, well, we appreciate it. Best of luck this Friday. And everyone, please come back and join us next week. Thank you for joining us for the Glen Academy Coaches Show with Rocky Hidalgo on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Come out to Marshside Grill and join us every Sunday night at 6.30 for the Rocky Hidalgo Show. This is Drayton Hogarth signing off.